Hello, this is Theodore Reynolds, Operator Prime, Mind Tree Exponential, homeschooling for the 21st century. Today, on a podcast, we learn about the optimal learning environment. The best way to understand the effects of the learning environment on the quality and productivity of the learning is to compare two students in two different environments, one in the homeschooling environment and one in the mass education environment. There we can look at three behaviors and see how in one environment those support learning and in the same, those same behaviors in the other environment are actually treated as misbehaviors and punished, which distracts from the learning. Today we'll cover three specific aspects, including movement, not just fidgeting, but movement in a grander scale. We'll consider sleep or a lack of sleep, which the mass education system environment tends to produce. Thirdly, we will look at the lack of physical comfort in a learning environment and its effects. So, let's consider movement in each of these environments. In the mass education systems, a student that moves too much is said to fidget and considered to be, to have a learning disability called attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. They're hyperactive because they move. That's, it's a sign that they're not properly learning. And actually they'll be punished for it. They'll be reprimanded and encouraged not to fidget, not to move. Take that same activity in a homeschool environment. And when my daughter fidgets and jumps out of her seat or spins in her seat or otherwise expresses movement, it's generally in response to engagement with what we are learning. She gets excited and it trembles out of her body. And were I to swat her with a ruler because of that, I would be disrupting that engagement. That's what mass education system does. A homeschool system encourages that movement. We harness that movement. And that is just one aspect of the environment that can affect learning. In a school where you're supposed to sit still and you're not supposed to move, that's counter to the learning because movement is an expression of engagement, as I, as I mentioned before. Our brains are designed to combine our movements with learning. There is a flood of information in the last 10 years that shows that exercise is beneficial to learning. Increases blood flow, increases all these good hormones that cause growth in your brain, and your learning can turn into synapses and and myelin, the actual physical stuff of learning, all of which is spurred on by movement. Indeed, one of the greatest ways to learn is by moving. So we don't learn how to swing an axe by reading about swinging an axe. That won't teach you. You can only learn through the actual movement of swinging the axe. That's, that's an odd analogy, but it has to do with another aspect of our learning system enrichment. Uh, Swinging an axe, for example, puts you on the very edge of learning. (laughs) So, aside from that movement, you want to encourage movement as much as you can. It increases learning. So any environment that prevents movement or impedes movement or punishes movement is an unhealthy learning environment. The second behavior that is affected by the environment is sleep. And this has to do with the mass system that requires everybody meet on time. Everybody has to be on the same schedule. We're going to meet in the morning because that's the way we've always done it. All these old antiquated beliefs about how humans should be operating leads to school children 
of all ages and adults, of course, who are terribly sleep deprived. And if the brain is sleep deprived, it doesn't learn very well. No matter how well the teacher does, no matter how improved the technology, no matter any of that, if the child is sleep deprived, it, the brain just won't learn. It's just such an impediment to good learning that any healthy learning environment will promote proper and healthy sleep patterns. This includes opportunities to take naps, which the public school and mass education systems do not allow for obvious reasons. They can't. They don't have the resources, I guess. But what it does is it teaches children to, or young adults in high school, to start drinking coffee, to get through, to power through the day, as though that were the solution. But there's a reason to believe that kind of will to get through the day is is counter it, it over the long term it makes you less productive and the quality of your mental output is not will not maintain throughout the day it'll be up and down and up and down and it creates a wave of productivity waves of productivity which overall aren't as good as natural healthy sleep patterns that accept being tired in the middle of the day instead of seeing that as an opportunity to go fill up on sugary, caffeinated drinks. And thirdly, now, an environment that lacks or provides physical comfort. We're creatures that seek physical comfort. Our brains are designed to understand that. We want warmth and we want a certain level of comfort. That's a natural drive. Schools with their desks, which seem if they aren't actually designed to be as uncomfortable as possible to prevent you from leaning back from falling asleep for example these tiny little desks are little machines of torture you can't move it drives me me crazy i get claustrophobic just thinking about it i gotta get up and move my legs start shaking also lack of physical comfort means Poor air. So when I'm in a classroom filled with 30 other kids who've been coughing and exhaust fumes have been leaking out of them in other ways as well, I'm really concerned about the air quality. Ugh. I get nervous just thinking about it. And also there's hardly ever any windows, no natural light. Some of these schools and classrooms look like prison cells, bricks, and they have tiny little slits and there's no natural light, so there must be fungus and mold growing in the corners just because you don't have the natural elements to clean them. It's all the chemicals. Anyway, the, compare that to a homeschool environment. With our, We have tons of windows. We have tons of plants. We maintain and ensure that the quality of the air is, is high and, and really well maintained so that we all breathe well. And water, we always have access to really good water. Whereas schools have to share the, the water fountains. And who knows how clean that water is. And the fountains themselves, who knows. What about needing to go to the bathroom? You have to ask permission in a school. You have to, you have to leave the lecture and miss parts. Well, in a homeschool environment, that, that isn't a problem. You just go and leave and, and function as your biorhythms dictate and, and you can watch those and use tech to, to monitor yourself and make sure that you're performing at your optimum healthy levels. The environment is that much healthier. And when you take care of the vehicle of your brain, this very tender and fleshy piece of highly advanced equipment, your brain, when you take care of the vehicle, the body, Ensuring that the environment's clean and healthy. Ensuring that the body is healthy. The brain produces clean, brilliant light or ideas is so often considered the case with a light bulb above your head. There's, there's a reason for that analogy. Thinking is a bright act. It's an energy intensive act and you need clean energy to fire all those synapses and, and, and fire that that brain which requires so much energy to operate functionally and, 
and optimally. And you can only reach those states by ensuring physical comfort, plenty of sleep, and freedom of movement. The body is a machine of movement, and the brain is attached to that body. So get out and move. If you're listening to a podcast, you may already be moving, perhaps walking, which is even, which is probably the best learning activity, uh, best learning movement there is. Okay, so in this episode, we covered the optimal learning environment, which supports good sleep habits. You got to make sure you're getting lots of sleep, good sleep. Not stress sleep, waking up to alarms. You need good sleep. A learning environment needs to take into account sleep, including the ability to take naps when and where as needed, as necessary. A healthy and optimal learning environment also needs freedom of movement. The body needs movement. It encourages the brain to operate optimally, but movement is the release release of tension. So if you're learning something difficult, it's tense and your brain will send the signal to your body. And if you don't release that, it builds tension and it impedes your ability to think. So freedom of movement because movement increases learning. And finally, considerations of simple physical comfort, creature comforts, clean air, clean water, natural sunlight, These simple but incredibly important aspects improve learning for the reason that the brain is very delicate and susceptible to the environment. The the quality of production from your brain will definitely be impacted by the quality of your environment. So make it the most, no, not, not the most, that's, That's not the idea. Exactly not the idea. Optimal. You want it to be the optimal environment. And that was an interesting thing. Because in our next episode, we're going to talk about the difference between optimal productivity and maximum output. And which one is the best. And which and why they are both important. So I hope to see you on the next episode.